Do you remember Crossy Road? The hit mobile game from 2014 that took the white of the chicken cross the road joke to a whole nother level? Well, for this month, I decided I wanted to recreate that iconic game, but I didn't want to make a one-for-one -one copy, so I decided to combine it with one of my old prototypes, Temple Dash. With only three weeks to spare, I wanted to try and work on something small and feasible for the time frame. This video is going to be a bit more technical, so I hope you enjoy it. Enough dawdling, let's get started. So the plan for the game is simple. Make a character that can move in any cardinal direction, create a bunch of different road types that the player must traverse, and track and save the player's score. In Crossy Road, you move your character based on the direction you swipe. Obviously, I'm not making mine an app because f*** that, so we'll stick to the infamous WASD keys. Time to create the machine of the game, the map generator. Its job is to, surprise surprise, generate the map row by row and ensure we don't run out of space to move. Then we'll slap together a simple camera controller, and hey presto, that's Crossy Road. Although, it's a little dull. Let's upgrade these rows a bit. We don't want the map generator to actually determine what each tile is, because its job is just to spawn the tiles. So we'll make an abstract row scriptable object that will handle that for us, and each different row type can determine which tile should be spawned and where. Now we get to have some fun with these rows. First we'll make an obstacle row that will spawn multiple wall objects that the player must move around. Then we'll also make a pit row where the player will fall and die if they move over it. The player score is based on the furthest distance that the player travels from the start. To keep things simple I use player press to track and update the score. This makes it easy to access the player's high score from the new and very minimalist main menu. Currently there's no challenge, so let's change that. We'll make a saw blade row that will send out saw blades in increments that will kill the player if they touch them. In my version, this will be the equivalent of the road sections from Crossy Road. It's also looking a little dull, so to get a better sense of what the game could look like, I imported some models from my zombie tactics project. Even though I hate to admit it, art is very important and makes a huge difference, even if they're just placeholders. I wanted more control over which rows would spawn and when, so I created row conditions. It's basically a series of checks to determine whether or not a row can be spawned. For example, I could say I don't want an obstacle row to appear after a saw blade row, or I don't want there to be more than three consecutive pit rows, etc. To make my game more similar to Crossy Road, I updated the camera to always move forward at a constant rate, and if the player is too slow, an invisible wall will catch and kill them. Now, some of these rows are a little simple, so it's time to make a new row, and we'll call this the spike row. A spike trap works like this. When a player steps on the trap, it activates and brings the spikes to the surface. Then, after a brief delay, the spikes shoot up and kill the player if they are still standing on it. If the player moves out of the way in time, the spikes act as a wall until they go back down. Even though there's no equivalent of this in Crossy Road, I feel like this adds another level of challenge, especially when the player is waiting and trying to time their movement to dodge around other traps. With the bulk of the content done, I moved onto my favorite part, art. Using one of the models from my other project as a base, and the explorer from my original game as inspiration, I got working on bringing the character to life. Having the art from my original game as a guide definitely made this easier, although the hat was a giant pain in the ass to make it look decent. I went through a lot of iterations on the tiles. I started off with bricks to make it feel like a temple, but it was so repetitive and dull. I experimented with the grass tile too, but that didn't feel quite right either. I finally settled on going for a simple dirt tile for the majority of the rows, and the traps can use the bricks to help differentiate them from everything else. This looked good, but it still didn't feel that much like a temple, so I made the row walls out of mossy bricks to help set the theme a bit better. I then made some transition tiles from the main part of the rows to the edges so it wasn't an abrupt cutoff, and instead of trees, I decided to go with pillars as the obstacle players must maneuver around. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but I spent so much time on the other parts that I just needed to move on. And this is what it looks like when it's all put together. Next task was to make one of the most iconic parts of Crossy Road, the rivers. The main challenge is that our little explorer here can't swim, so jumping in the water is a no-go. There are two types of river rows we will make. The first one is what we'll call the lily pad row. It spawns lily pads in a few spots along the row where the player can safely cross. But for simplicity and mostly because I can't be bothered, we'll just make this a normal dirt tile. The second type of row is the log row. This will continuously spawn logs that drift from one side of the row to the other, and the player can hop across the moving logs to the other side. But if a player stays on the log too long, they'll be swept away by the current. Luckily, I was able to reuse a bunch of the code from the saw blades, which saved a lot of time. 
Like most engineers, I was expecting it to break completely, but it surprisingly worked on the first go, which is incredibly lucky. Add a quick splash of paint and we're done. With only a few days left, it was time to put on some final touches. I made the row slightly longer and made the camera follow the player left and right. I removed the pit rows because I didn't feel like they added very much to the game, and I fixed up the start so that a player has a few safety rows before they begin so they're not instantly killed. And voila, that's Temple Dash. And that about wraps up the project. This was a nice short little game I wanted to work on to give me a bit of a break from my other projects, but don't worry I'll be getting back to those soon. And I'm happy with how it turned out, because I wanted to do a little endless runner game like this for a while. I had a bunch of ideas I would have loved to add in, but I just didn't have enough time to cram them into these three short weeks. But if you like the project and want to see me expand on it some more, or maybe even do a tutorial, let me know in the comments and leave any other suggestions you have. And who knows, with a bit of polish, I might even chuck it up on the app store someday. Hips the whale, please don't sue me. And that's everything for this month's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Cheers everyone.